Comrades, I am Admiral Andre, and welcome back to the next installment of our uh, Kerbal Builds here. Today we'll be looking at the Soyuz and its booster, so as always, let's begin with Google Images. So, comrades, let's have a look at the Soyuz booster. Now, if we just have some, uh, well, these will obviously be better documented essentially than the Voskhod or even the Vostok because there's been so many Soyuz launches over the years. So finding inspiration here will not be a problem. Now, if we have a look at this, uh, it's just loading in here, um, but we can see it from all the other images as well because it's such a large one the bottom part that covers the engines there it's actually orange but I can't reproduce that because we don't have a choice of color for the engine housing it's just white and different sizes so that will just have to stay white then then we have the gray stripe the white again I'm wondering about the length of this first stage here Somewhere I saw that it is essentially the same as the Voskhod. This one, now again, I'm not too sure how reliable this is, but uh, this is from some NASA forum, I don't know. But I think this is generally what I'm going to go with. If we have a look, this is the Voskhod launcher. Now you can see the, f the second stage is indeed longer than the second stage of the Vostok, but it is essentially exactly the same as the Soyuz. And is, I think it's because the Soyuz, of course, it weighs a bit more than Voskhod, but not that much more, honestly. So I think we're going to leave that upper stage the same. It also has one of those engines with the four nozzles and then the verniers on the outside, like the Voskhod. So I think that's good. I just want to go back to this again. So we have another orange covering of the engine there, which again I can't reproduce. Then the tank is grey and white. Now there I might throw some orange in. So again, I think this is pretty much what we have already. So I think we will leave the whole thing the same. Just change the craft itself. I think that might work. Now these are different versions of the Soyuz. So I'm probably going to have to do one of those uh, progress ones as well. That should be interesting. I'm not sure how to do that, though, because really those are all just crude capsules that are around that uh, we have now. Although you could just make them uncrewed by adding a probe core. Then, yes, so I guess that's it for the rocket. Of course, there's the important feature of the launch escape system. So there I'm going to have to change up my whole fairing system. Now this is a Lego build, that's not quite what I want. So that fairing is white and it goes all the way across the vehicle to the top where the escape system is. Now that will be easy to do because we have an escape system already. But that means I'm going to have to build it from the bottom up. So that will be a bit of a change. Now for the actual craft. There were some nice images. This one is from Wikipedia. This is actually a very good quality one that we can use. So let's just load this up. And I might actually go to it and open it up as well. Because this one has a lot of detail. Now, of course, this is one of the more modern versions of the Soyuz. But in Kerbal case, we won't have really any variations. Because the capsules can't change color. But anyway, so here we have, of course, again, the service module. Now, it does go out a little bit here. You see, it's not in line with the rest of the craft. I'm not sure if I can do that, honestly. We'll see. But then it has these uh, thrusters on the bottom. So that is, again, to just help it swivel around, essentially. Then it has also these thrusters right here. So this would be now right beneath the capsule itself. And these are again pointing directly out and then to the sides and back as well. So this is like a three-way one. Now I know they have two nozzles for each one, but for us that will not be practical. 
Then, of course, the solar panels, and uh, they're attached here sort of in the middle of the service module. What else could we see here? Of course, we have the orbital module and the docking port on the top, and these two docking antennas, or radars essentially, that are pretty much forward on the orbital module, so they don't sit in the middle, they sit quite forward. But I have seen that these do change with the evolution of the Soyuz. So on the earlier versions, they would sit maybe on the other side or a bit back or a bit forward or whatever the case might be. But that's not so important. Then I guess, yes, that's it. So really what I'll be using is the Foscod 3 crew version for the return module because it has this rounded shape on the top and then I'll just use a fairing to cover up the bottom there. I have seen people use the new Gemini module but that just has two kerbals in it so that's not going to work for me. I want three. It has to be three. Then I think that's pretty much all that we need to see here. We can always refer back to this as we build. So let's get back into the game comrades. So, comrades, we begin here again with the Voskhod. I'm just going to remove this whole rocket away from the craft and we'll put it to one side. We could even save it as a sub-assembly, honestly. But I don't think that's necessary right now. So now we say farewell to this and we get rid of it. Now we start from scratch, comrades. And I think, obviously, well, there's no choice. It has to be the pomegranate. There we go. That's the first part. So this will be the re-entry module. And we can take the ablator out because we don't need it. We'll have a separate heat shield because we will not be detaching the capsule from the bottom part here. So we could say decoupler is now disabled as well. Then underneath that, we need a fairing. So let's find one. Is that the right size that I'm looking for? No, it's this one. So this will be the 1.875 meter one. And this we just attach on the bottom. And then now the challenge is to make it sort of look nice here. That's always difficult because you can see it's clipping into the craft there. So it has a very uneven line there. I wonder where the best place would be. Ideally, we would just want this thing to go straight out and then be sort of flush with the vehicle. But then also I don't want it over the window here. So this is a bit now finicky. No, you see, if it's like this, I don't like that because it's got this very broken line there. No, 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 no. Let's try again. Edit the fairing. It'll never be perfect. It's just a case of trying to find the right point here. Or actually, what if I use a cubic octagonal strut somewhere? Now, this is obviously, again, the... Uh, entry hatch there but uh, so let's not use that let's put it here somewhere I'm just going to do a little experiment to see if it might work better probably not let's try that build fairing just hoping it might hmm how about that but now what happens if I take this away? I think we found it, comrades. Look at that. That's a nice clean line. But now is that high enough? Oh, you know, sometimes being a perfectionist is not a good thing. I think that works actually. Obviously we have this sort of hatch area bulging up a little bit, but if you look at the line itself, it actually complements the craft very nicely there. And it has this bell shape of the re-entry module. I like this. We're going to go with it, comrades, because it on the balance again is the best looking option. Now in terms of the fairing, we do not want this staged, so we turn this off, not staged, so it is part of the craft now. 
color scheme, I'm not sure. The Soyuz that we just saw has a very dark sort of foil almost covering this whole area. So this could be the best option. Add some nice detail to it. If it's just plain white there, I don't know if I like that so much. You could go with that though. I don't see a reason why not. What about the last one here? No, that's definitely not right. But uh, my favorite is this one. I think this one works the nicest. So let's go with this one. Detail again, it adds a bit of texture there. Now we need the heat shield. So for that, of course, just a 1875 heat shield. And we can actually remove some of the ablator. There's so much, 500. We probably need only 100 for low Kerbin orbit, or even less, honestly. Mm, but now, before we do that, let's put the landing rockets on. I think that's important. So, of course, the Soyuz uses the landing rockets to help it slow down, but it does have three parachutes, I think. I'm just going to have to go out of the game quickly and have a look again. I've seen the Soyuz landing so many times, but I can't remember if it has three parachutes. I'm almost certain it does though. No, it's just one massive parachute. Okay. Hmm. It's getting confused with Apollo here. So then definitely we will need these landing rockets. And in this case, I think we're just going to go with the radial mount parachute again. Using the Mark 16 XL is just going to be too much to clip in there. Mm, no, then it's it's coming to a point there. I don't like that. Let's just experiment with it. You know, you could sort of get away with that. That doesn't look bad, though. Let me just look at the images again. No, it has like this flat top there. No, that's not going to work. Mm-mm. Although that doesn't look bad, so if you would like to do that, I certainly can vouch for it looking nice. So we'll just use one here. I'm going to just add it now because then we can work out the landing rockets with the correct weight here. Okay, just like that, and then of course we can maneuver it. Not sure if that will really change the center of mass a lot. So let's move it in now. Just not not too far, but I don't want it showing. There. That'll do, comrades. That'll do. So now we have our parachute as well. Now we need the landing rockets. So obviously we will ditch the heat shield before using the landing rockets. Now we could add several here. I'm not sure how many the Soyuz uses, but for us even one would be enough to be honest. But let's put two, because getting one in the right place, well, it's not really that difficult. There it is, pretty much. Mm, I think if we use like three and three or something, it's going to be such overkill. Let's try that. Now, this gives us a thrust to weight of uh, 0 0.7. This is now with a full fuel. Now, I don't want full fuel. I only want it burning for half a second or so before landing. Now it gives us 0.71. You can see it is offset, or is it? No, it's just my orientation. Okay. I'm going to do a test with this. We'll do it. Oh, good grief. Every time you move a separatron, it sort of jumps around. You see now. Yep. Again, just have to more or less look at this. Of course, we'll be hanging from the parachute, so if it's a little bit offset, it won't be a problem. So I'm going to just have this. Uh, of course, we also want to stage the heat shield. So heat shield jettison is staged there. The force percent we can leave, but you know me, I like to turn it down a little bit just to make things more gentle. 
So what we want here is we want the heat shield dropping, first the parachute, then the heat shield once the parachute fully deploys, otherwise it will just remain there due to the aerodynamic forces. Then the rocket. So let us do a quick test, comrades. We're going to do a sort of a little Joe type test. We'll just throw on a decoupler, which we will need anyway, and then use a solid field rocket, the smallest one. It doesn't matter what it looks like right now. I just want this thing going some distance and then we can see what happens. So, oh, no, no, no. Well, the rocket is saved already. We'll just merge again. So let's go. You know, it's trial and error with this sort of thing. I also figured out why previously if we have the airlock attached and we place a Kerbal in there, why the Kerbal doesn't show on the image here. But then last time when I did it, it worked. It was because of the suit. If you have the old suits on, they don't actually show there. So that's uh, something that developers can still look at. But let's launch. Oh, barely. Good grief. It's a bit underpowered here. Mm, oh well, it will work for us. I just want to see what happens with the landing. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Abort situation. Not going to help. Not going to help. Now we're going down. Parachute burning away there, but anyway. This is a simulated test. So yes, let's see. We're hanging there nicely and I would say now ditch that and then half a second or so. Oh no, that was not enough. But then again, what blew up there? Was it the heat shield again or... Hmm, good grief. No, I'm not happy with that. We're going to have to have two. Which is why it is great to do tests, comrades. That is why we test. So let us get to them. No! No, my fairing! My beautiful fairing! Don't save. Load the autosave. Haha! -ha. Get rid of this thing and just get rid of the heat shield and take this out. Now let's put two of them on. Now it doesn't matter too much but I want it in the central section because you can see it's slightly indented so the nozzles will hopefully not hit the ground. That looks much better to be honest. 1.41 so it counteracts you see if it's just got a thrust to weight of 1 what will happen then? Let's think about it. Nothing. No? Let's think logically. So if we're not moving, if we're on the ground and we have a thrust to weight of 1, then nothing will happen. However, we are falling down at let's say 6 meters per second or 10 or whatever the case might be and we then fire it. Is it still going to... Oh, good grief. Because we're now going negative, so if we're standing still, nothing happens. So if we're going negative, I'm not sure. Oh, good grief, I'm just confusing myself here. Let's not worry about it. Let's just put this stuff on and then see what happens. Let's do it the Kerbal way, comrades. We could be all mathematical and all that here, but... Let's not go that far. So we'll say... 1.41. I like that. Half a second, uh, it cuts it close, I admit. That means you have to be quite, as we say, on the ball to hit it at the right time. Let's just try again. I want to try again. We'll use this one now. Ditch that, then the parachute, then that, then that. Let's go. Okay, let's just launch. We're not going to stand on ceremony here. No control, of course, again. No! Okay, there's some kind of lifting body type of thing happening here. Oh, that was just purely from the center of mass. No! Stop, 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 stop. This is not good. 
Parachute! Okay, see this is the problem with ditching the heat shield before we open the parachute fully. Mm, I know the parachute is not perfectly centered there. I might have to work on that. Anyway, so we are going at 10 meters per second. Now, comrades, that's a bit too fast. So that's why we do need the rockets. So let's just go back down. Now, this would not be a good idea to land with at night because you're going to have a hard time to see how far you are above the surface. So do keep that in mind with the landing rockets. So I'm just watching here 40, 30... 2010. Was that nice and slow? I have sort of the sense that it was. Didn't see here actually. I was still looking up here. Hmm. Well, nothing broke, so I'll take that as a success, comrades. Let's go back. Good, so now we can continue. Let's just put this down. Now, I have also seen some people build the Soyuz like this. Then they'll have this and then the service module. And I know technically that is correct. They do have this sort of a truss again in between. But it's covered by that foil thing that we saw in the image there. You don't see this. It's underneath. So I'm not going to do that. We will pretend here it's in between this. That's why we have this shroud here. So... Uh, that's what we will do. Now we need the fuel tank. So what about this? Is that a lot or is that perfect? Difficult to say. We need to build the rest of it first. So here we just want a decoupler. And this one will be... We could go with a very small one, but I think going with the same size that we have is actually the best, or is that? No. No, 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 no. The one down from that. Yes. That's the one I want. This will be the... doesn't say the diameter, but this would be the traditional one and a half, I think. Is this what I want? It covers the hatch a little bit here. I'm sure they'll still be able to get out, though. Hmm, let's just place the top part and then look at it. Now, here, comrades, it's entirely up to you, as is everything, of course. I like to put on the P re-entry module, the two Kerbal one. We could put another three Kerbal one, because I know they could all move into the orbital module there. But uh, for me, it's sort of, you know, don't want to make it exactly the same there. And... Uh, it's also so we can just spread out the crew. So we will imagine there's some equipment. Obviously, their the toilet is up here. So then we won't put three seats in. Now, let's flip this thing over. And now it's your choice again how you want this to point. What did I do last time when I did the test? Did I have the airlock point the same way? I think I did. Now I can't, I, I'm not sure if this is how it really is. Let me just see if I can find an image. I think that is how it is. Let's just see, I'm gonna Google Soyuz airlock because they, you can use that upper door or hatch as an airlock. But I need to see where it is, what its orientation is. This is again entirely uh, optional. You don't even need to worry about this sort of thing. But uh, I do for some reason. So here's an image. What is this? Soyuz spacecraft. That looks like a hatch. It's where the uh, periscope sits. So is that now the opposite side? Come on people. Google images. I need better better images here. Show me, show me something, for goodness sake. Mm, I think it is on the opposite side. I'm sure someone will know. Let me just see what this image shows. That again looks, it's on the side where the periscope is. And if we saw before, 
that image with the periscope so the hatch is on the other side yes mystery solved comrades so the normal hatch is on this side and then therefore we want it like this then the uh, sort of spacewalk hatch if you want is on this side again like the Voskhod the opposite again now we move this down until it sits flush with the decoupler Mm, could go a little more. Perfect. So, the question is, do we like this more or would we like it better if it had a small decoupler? I'm going to have a look at this image again. That decoupler or that middle section between the two modules is about the same diameter as the docking port. And for this, I think I want to use one of the normal docking ports, not one of the junior ones. I'm not sure. This is again entirely up to you, but uh, I still like this sort of thing. You know, it's more comfortable at least for them to fit through. Nowadays, I see they change the description of the junior docking port. Previously, they said there in the description it only transfers fuel and resources but of course you could move kerbals through it anyway but now it says there as a result of its small size kerbals need to hold their breath and wiggle to slip through so they do now acknowledge that so we could use this and this is actually what they use with the apollo the lem and all of that this is sort of what you have to use now on that lem module if we have a look here it has only a small port you could probably fit a big one over but now if we use the small one that totally does not look right if I go back to the image mm -mm, no I don't like this I'm not sure we could of course try using one of the adapters let's play around with this No, that doesn't look right. That looks like some pagoda or something. No, 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 no. I'm going with a big one. We can make another version that has the smaller decoupler here and the smaller docking port as well. But for now, let's use this one. So, okay, we've done that. Now we need to build the rest of it. So now we get a sense of the scale here. Also, I want to turn down the percentage on that so let's make that five or even just one just gently gently there then this part is that the right size I'm just going back to Google images the whole time so the fuel tank there is well this is now the whole service module it's about just over the size of the capsule so it is actually pretty accurate because we're not counting the fairing there. Yes, that's going to have to do. Now it doesn't have this kind of pipe thing here. Although we could just rotate it. Let's just see what other options we have. Hmm. You know, that's not awful. That is not awful, especially if we put it like this. Let me just see what else we have. We've got these small segments. Then we could make the whole thing grey. But that whole thing is not grey. It's actually mostly white. Yeah. No, it's definitely not that configuration. Let's try this one again. No, it has no orange in it. You know, I'm curious. I'm just going to open up the, not save this, uh, merge, the one that I built before in that other video. New Soyuz merge. I just want to see because I like the way I did that. That's actually only one of the flat ones. Hmm. You know what I'm going to do? I'm not sure about the tank still. 
Oh, that doesn't work so nicely. But I'm going to steal this to save some time with these uh, thrusters there. I like those and they're already pointed nicely and all of that. So I'm going to keep that. Now if I keep this part here, actually I do have to say I like the scale again. Let's dump this. So I did use that one with the ridges on the side. I'm just going back to the uh, image. Just going back and having a look. Mm, it is about the size of the capsule there. Hmm, this is difficult. This is not easy. What if we add another one? And actually that should be flipped around. In terms of the feel, of course, let's just see that and then that. So this gives us a kilometer, which is of course a bit too much. Mm, I'll do... okay, we're gonna do some experiments here, comrades, but I want to swap this around. I don't like that this orientation is in this way. I use this plate. I know now the thing bulges out here on the bottom, but that's going to be a bit difficult to create. The best way to do that, I imagine, is like this Rockomax brandy coupler kind of a thing, sort of clipped in a little bit. But then fitting that onto the rocket is going to be a challenge, because that's pretty much a fixed diameter, because of this decoupler, which we have to use to fit the theme there. So no, this is fine. Besides, this plate does give it a slight sense of sort of sticking out there, although it doesn't really. Now, the engine that I used was the Spark, which is not very powerful. We might play around with that. Let's put on the solar panels. Yes, so I'm going to go with this. We'll see what it looks like in orbit. Now, for the solar panels, comrades, we don't really have a well-fitting panel. Because if I extend this, you'll see it's it's a bit too small for the scale, if we looked at that previous image. I've seen also people use two of them. Let's just double this. Like that. But now the issue is when the craft points like this and the sun is right above you here, you're going to get this sort of thing, which I don't like. This is a double panel. So again, it's the whole issue of what is best for you. I think one panel is going to have to do. We could do the... Uh, which one is that? The 3 by 2 but I also think that's not quite right. That's too short again. If it was a bit longer, it would be great. Then this would be very nice, but... No. Although... Mm, this is such a minor issue. Good grief. Can give one a headache if you let it. Now, we'll use one of the normal 1x6s. But you can, of course, use anything else that you like. Even the massive ones, but those are really overkill. So, yes, let's see if I can get this thing to fit here nicely. It's about in the middle, I would say. You can actually see I've got some monopropellant in there. Maybe a bit more. Though, actually I like that. That'll do. Let's just have a look at this whole thing. This tank is not full. That's why I put the monopropellant in there. Because otherwise, again, we would have clipping. Of course, we do have clipping. But at least now it's logical. Because this tank is not full. We do have service modules now. But it's not the right thing. That is really intended by the developers to be the service module for the Germany, even though it's not slanted, but we'll still have a whole discussion about that. And we can't change the color, so no, this is what I'm going with. 
So, the uh, thrust is on the back. We of course have these ports here to move the craft forward, to translate forward. Then we have these ones as we saw on the bottom here. The reason why they moved a little bit up is because if they're a bit down, they're going to be sticking out there. Then we have this, so I just have to take these again and four times symmetry, move it back. This will save us a bit of time. Just move it so it's nice and in line with the bottom. And like that. There we go. So now we have those clusters of uh, monopropellant thrusters. So they will bring us backwards and roll us. I just also want to mess around with this. Now, comrades, I have noticed if you bring the thrust limiter to under 50, it doesn't make those puffs of monopropellant when you use them. So I'll take it up to 55. I think even the 66 and a half that I used for the Voskhod is too much. It's too much. Let's bring it down. Again, purely because I'm finicky. Okay, so that's done. Now this one. The ones on the back I will leave because they are... Although, should I? No, I'll change them. I'll change them. They're not engines, essentially. So now we get the engine. I don't like the spark. It's way too weak. Although, again, you can argue. This is why I did went, uh, go with it before. <sighs> the thing is, again, this engine is sort of built into the service module. So it doesn't have a large nozzle sticking out the bottom. Certainly not like that. And... 0.23 thrust to weight ratio. I know it's a bit low, but this is purely for orbital maneuvers and, of course, re entry. So it could actually work. What's our other options? We could try another terrier, but you see how, how much larger the nozzle will be. What about one of these, perhaps? If we just have one of these. Because these are essentially legitimate engines in their own right, these verniers. Then move that in there. But that's going to still stick out even more. No, I think I'm going to stick with this. Yes, it still has that pipe. I moved it in a little bit, but in a way that we don't just see the nozzle, because that looks weird. In this way, it still looks a bit nice there. Okay, we'll go with that. So, are we generally in a good state right now? Let's just move this junk out of the way, if I can. I'm going to have some water here, comrades. Now, there was... I placed this antenna on here before. Let's just have a look. I'm going back to the image. There is... There's like a, several of these very small antennas sticking out the bottom. The one sits on that side, sort of, on the side of the one panel, and then there's also one on the bottom. Now, where would this be? Wait, I have to go back again. That's basically like straight out. I'll put it here and then move it around a little bit. Now these again, when they're extended, they're going to be too long, but uh, one of those things, I guess. There, that'll do, that'll do. I just want the gray area right on the edge. There. So, I think that will do, because we don't want too many antennas like with the uh, Vostok and Voskhod. So now we come to the docking radar antenna things. And one is like on the top and on the side. So let's find something. Now here again, the only option really is the high gain antenna. It's a bit too oversized for this, but it, it will work. It will work. So I'm going to take this. 
just put it on one time symmetry it was about there I would say on that detailed image that we saw okay, that is entirely bizarre let's play around with this I like that the top is angled though so I, I think it's it, it's going to look quite nice yes you see very nice there I like that so of course when it deploys bang it sits up like that so we imagine this is used for tracking the docking port or whatever the case might be the target or communicating even no, that white part will just have to stick out the middle there. It goes all the way through. Okay, so now take this again. And place one on this side. Roughly in line again. Now, depending on the version of the Vostok, not oh, good grief Vostok, on the, on the version of the Soyuz that you're trying to create you might move these around a bit but for me this will work how's that I think that's nice so there we go we now have those two antennas there so I don't want to move them in further because then they magically pivot out of the capsule I want to see the base of this thing so let's retract them and then I think we're done with this craft itself now we just need to put on the launch escape system now of course those antennas are a bit close there I also want to move the docking port a little bit down there's a gap there there we go it's interesting when you really think about these things comrades because I mean they go to all this trouble each time to build a Soyuz and then it's one use and it's done it's gone that to me is almost a tragedy but that's the way it goes it's the same with Apollo but yes once off one day hopefully we'll have these reusable SSTOs but I'm not sure maybe Luckily, uh, SpaceX is moving in the right direction. Now, doing those recreations, that's impossible for me. To land like that, I'm not on that level. To land a booster back on the ground in stock KSP, that's a whole other story. Let's bring this down a bit. There we go, it sits nice, does it? There we go now I just want to bring the strength down because it always bothers me it's a little overpowered you can almost imagine them getting their necks ripped off when this thing fires and although it was powerful and it was supposed to kick them away quickly I still think it's too powerful for for KSP at least for the vehicles that I've built to leave them on a hundred percent let's put it on 66 and a half again Ah, uh, there. All things being equal, we'll probably not even use them. So that's it. There is Soyuz. I'm going to rename this now. So this will be Tutorial Soy Soyuz. What the heck is that? Making history expansion and save. Now we just get the rocket. Of course, there's the issue with the fairing now. Actually, we should pay attention to that. I'm going to put all of these things on hotkeys again. Let's retract those. Number one will be... No, what's happening here? So I already have the antennas. I'll put the solar panels on as well. That's it. So it's all sorted. Now I need the fairing business. Let's think about this sort of thing. We're obviously going to need a decoupler here. For this I actually used one of these before. Now... We do have the engine plate. Hmm... Let's bring it down short. But this will all be hidden again. No... 
just going back to the uh, images here, comrades. I just want to see something. If I can, I'm going to say Soyuz upper stage. Well, I see an image that actually shows me what I want to see. Probably not. Mm, no, essentially we don't need to bother with this. This is going to still be the interstage between the first and second stages there. So no, 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 we're not going to bother with that. We're just going to have a normal tiny decoupler here. Hmm, now let's put it on the engine. Just like that we won't see it, will we? Oh, I think too much. There, that'll do. Now, what's next? We need the fairing for the top. So find that. This also helps solve the problem of having another fairing down here, like with the Vostok. I think this will be the right one. Uh, oh yes, I have to say, comrades, I figured something out. It annoyed the heck out of me for the longest time because I couldn't figure out what was happening. I think it was this one actually, or was it the smaller one? No, this one. I tried to build one of the Apollo recreations, uh, uh, Saturn V. But each time you angle the fairing in like that, it doesn't want to place. You see it's orange there. And I just could not figure out what was going on here. It's because it's clipping into its own base there. You have to bring it out straight a little bit, then you can angle it. Can you believe it? That, I, oh, that was a mystery for me for a while. So uh, anyway, I don't know why I thought about that now. Was this whole fairing thing, it has to go out a bit more than that. Here we go. Now we have the problem of these docking antennas, because we can't put the fairing on the base of the launch escape system, because the, uh, the, the docking radar things will be sticking out there. But I still want to keep them there, so now we unfortunately have a situation of trying to put this above them. Like that. Now, I know, the thing here is, if, you, if we think really about this, well, then again. Because I was just going to say, if we think about this, those rockets on the escape system will actually fire into the fairing there, into that gap. But what happens if there's an abort, the fairing jettisons, so we don't need to worry about that. Then, of course, I know there is a gap, but from the top, the aerodynamic uh, aspect is covered because of the shield on the top of the launch escape system. So this still works for me. Now it is white in the images, so we will leave it like that. Let's just sort out the whole staging here. Or should we? No, we let's do that now. So we have the landing rockets. We have the... Is this the heat shield? Yes. Then we have the parachute. Then, now, before the re-entry, we will... I don't know if they... I think they actually ditched the orbital module and the service module at the same time. But in our case, that might lead to unintended consequences. So let's detach the orbital... No, which one would they detach first? Now I need to think, I saw this somewhere just recently, yesterday when I was reading up about the Soyuz. There was the whole question of when they detach the orbital module. Do they do it before the re-entry burn or after? And initially they did it before the re-entry burn. But the problem with that was, there was some kind of problematic mission where because this has all their sanitary facilities and a lot of supplies and all that, where they actually had a much longer, it took much longer to re-enter re than they thought, and they had to spend a whole day or something in just the uh, re-entry module after they ditched the re-entry module. And to avoid this, they first make the burn and then they ditch it. But now again, so I guess first we ditch the bottom part here, then we ditch the upper part. But they do say the drawback of this, of course, is if this 
orbital module does not detach before landing. They're all going to die because the landing rockets and the parachute can't work properly with the mass of the orbital module still attached. And of course it is a, an obstacle for the parachute. So there's so many considerations here comrades. I'm just fascinated by this. So we'll teach that one last. Then we ditch, we're not ditching that. No ablator on the orbital module and decouples the, the staging is disabled there. Then we, yes, we first ditch this, then the upper one. Of course, we fire the engine. Now this launch escape system I always put right on the end because we're going to ditch that anyway. So we don't need to worry about that. Because really we can't just stage it like normal because it has to decouple from the, uh, although we could just put a decoupler up there, but it has to detach from the docking port. So for that I use the keys. So we'll do that. So I'll just put it on the top there together with the fairing because it will go at the same time. Or does it actually? If it's not an abort system, does the fairing go first and then the launch escape system, or do they go at the same time? Probably it's first the fairing, to be honest. Now, a lot of this, comrades, is not... Uh, what's that? Mm, oh yes, this is when we're now in orbit there. So a lot of this now I haven't looked up, like when does the fairing detach and all of that. So you can look that up as well and change the order here accordingly. But I'm just going now by what I think is relatively logical. So yes, the uh, rest of it, we just open up the... Where would that now be? The Soyuz, not the Soyuz, the Voskhod 2 person, merge and attach. Now, unfortunately, this bottom part is not orange, but mm, it's one of those things. We're done. Let me just have a look again at the image. Yes, the fairing is white. They have these grid fins on the sides of the fairing, but I can't recreate that. And I know the launch escape system is a bit different than the one we have. It's a solid tube here on the bottom, like the part on the top. It goes straight through. It doesn't have this strut thing here. So that's why we end up with this gap now. Oh well. One of those things. So let's see. We have on the bottom here the engines and all of that. Then we ditch them. Then are we going to get rid of the fairing? Probably, to be honest, probably. By that time we'll be in the upper atmosphere. Then we'll fire the upper stage. And then we detach and then we're supposed to be in orbit. So there could be like another stage in here. I, I know there is that possibility. I don't know if they always use that. A fregat, I don't know how you say that, upper stage. Plans were made for a redesigned Soyuz with a fregat upper stage. No, 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 no. Modified. I don't know if they actually use that though. Hmm. It's used for commercial payloads. I don't think they use that anymore. Slightly modified geostationary transfer orbit. Redesigned Soyuz. No, I don't think that's for, for the module. That's for other purposes. Although you can tell me if I'm not uh, understanding that correctly. But yes, I think let's save again. Now let's look at the thrust to weight ratios here because we're dealing with a bit more mass now. 1.64 is not bad for the first stage, but I want the core stage to be a bit more. So we're going to put that on maximum. So now we end up with 171. That works for me. Then the upper stage is now a 1. We can move it up a little bit. Let's say 75. That's now a 1.2. And then, of course, the low thrust of the orbital module, but that's okay. So let's do a test of this, comrades. Let's pick our brave crew. The other crew is, of course, still in orbit. I still left them there in the Vosquad 1. 
let's put on the other suits there and uh, save again i'll do the speed speeding up here again of the launch and then i will speak to you again in orbit our oh, comrades i reverted almost immediately after launch because there still needs to be the auto strat here there's way too much of a wobble there we go that will reinforce the core of the rocket then of course the whole staging thing is not set up yet so abort we still have all of the engines firing. What the couples here? Yes, that's actually correct. Good. So all the engines will shut down. Is that all of them? Yes. Then we need to have this fire. So it's going to activate. We decouple there. Then after that we will have to detach. So I'm, I always use custom 10 for this. So for the... Uh, we could now select it anyway it will also have to activate and is that the right thing no it's not looking for the docking port mm. there decouple node okay so in any case in an abort situation we abort then also I need to make sure the fairings pop off then this thing fires it pulls us away then we press custom 10 to detach it and then after that we'll have to separate the orbital module as well but that will be one of the only things left on our action groups or our stages and then the parachute and all of that but uh, also when we're ascending and I want to get rid of this I'll just press custom 10 and then or zero key and then it will get rid of the launch escape system so I think now we are ready. Let's try again. Comrades, we made it. We made it. I'm really happy also with the strength of the uh, thrusters here. The 55 is very gentle. It's definitely the best. So, we have just enough fuel. We just made it, comrades. So, we might actually want to... I think... Are these tanks full? They might be. Which means we've pushed almost to the limit of the uh, R7. The booster that we have we could of course add more tanks and all of that but essentially this is perfect we don't want to waste fuel we could still have gone a bit more and we still have the onboard fuel as well so we detach that and here we are so press number one and everything deploys and i just want to go v so we see that i might also put this on the number one key so we extend these Where's the other one? It ripped off! Really interesting, it ripped off. Really? When on earth did that happen? I'll have to have a look at that. But I might also make the uh, fairings actually stage when the uh, launch escape system ejects. But now this is another issue. Hmm, I'll figure that one out. Don't worry, comrades. But I like the scale of this. I think I think this is the right thing. You have to let me know if you think the service module is a bit too long here. What I can do, of course, is move this part a little bit closer because there is still a gap here, you see. So we can actually bring that space a bit, a bit closer. Maybe I'll do that. 
But uh, there is our brave Soyuz. Let us just uh, activate the engine here and have a look inside. Of course, now we have seen this before. We can actually see out here. I'm not sure if that is the fairing. I guess it is blocking off of the window, but we can see. And of course, now we have the orbital module as well to uh, play around in. So now, comrades, we want to go home. We've done our experiments, our science. We have everything that we need. So let us flip ourselves around and we are going home. Activate that engine. Let's have a look. Where are we going to land? Now, unfortunately, we're going into the dark again. I might stop that and wait until we come around. That would be better. That would be better. Let's try and land in the desert. That's sort of par for the course. There. Retro, please. Mm, I just love all the things we can do with the stock KSP now. So this does, of course, take a little bit of time because the engine is not the most powerful, but still appropriate for an orbital engine, I think. What are you doing? No, everything is good. Just have to figure out why that antenna ripped off. It must be during the fairing separation or I separated too early and there were still aerodynamic forces involved. I'm not sure. Also, I might tweak the thrust level on the very first stage, on the boosters. It's just a bit too slow for me because I had to... Although it could just be I turned too early. I had to lock again instead of just following prograde. Uh, I think it's fine. One seven was thrust to weight, I think. That's actually a good number. But I might still tweak it. I can't help it. As always, comrades, I will share this in the description in the Dropbox, so you are more than welcome to try it out and make modifications and let me know. Let me know what you, what you achieve with it and where we could improve further. Now, I think that should be enough. We might actually land in the ocean, but that's okay. Otherwise, it's going to take a bit of time here. Now we separate the module first, which is the correct thing to do. Then I'll leave this on because this is their life support, or not really their life support, but their amenities and all of that, and we still have a while to go. Now we separate that. Good. Then this thing has no control anymore, so I can turn the RCS and SAS off. I'll see you closer to the ground again, comrades. Ah, it's an ocean landing indeed. But isn't this wonderful, comrades? Because the craft doesn't have any ablator, it actually burns black here. But of course it's in no danger because we have the heat shield on the bottom, which indeed lost about half of its ablator. But uh, from that tiny bit of heating that it received, it still turned uh, a bit crispy here. Which is kind of nice, actually. It is sort of that evidence again of the re-entry heat. I like this, I'll keep it. But of course you can tweak the ablator a bit there if you want. Now we prepare to detach the heat shield. There it goes. And now we just gently splash down, hopefully. Now again I would certainly recommend that you land during the daytime because that will help judge with uh, with the judging of the landing rockets and uh, the same actually for the Voskhod 
Okay, get ready. Oh, so wonderful. I'll never get tired of that. Comrades, that will do it for this episode. There is the Soyuz. So, uh, of course, you can make many more modifications to it, but I think this is a pretty decent attempt, actually. So, in the next episode, I think we'll probably go to the Gemini vehicle. We could go to Mercury, but Mercury will... Well, it might actually help because some of the tanks are new, even though the capsule is not. So we're going to do the Mercury mission next, comrades, then Germany, then the Apollo. And then, of course, I'll do a detailed walkthrough as I have done already. So that sort of thing. Thank you for watching, comrades. It's always fun to make these episodes. I just wonder if people actually are interested in the sort of babbling that I do. But anyway... Uh, see you next time, comrades. Have a fantastic day.